Hello, my name is Ever Barbero, and today I'd like to talk about example 3.1 in my textbook, Finite Element Analysis of Composite Materials Using Abacus. Example 3.1 is about modeling a laminated plate, to find the center deflection, when the square plate is simply supported around the boundary and loaded in compression, with an in-plane load NX. You may be wondering, how would a plate deflect transversely to its surface, when the load is in plane, applied on its edge. Well, the laminate is not symmetric. With composites, you have to disregard preconceptions acquired while studying isotropic materials. First, we change the work directory, so that the abacus files are organized into folders corresponding to examples in the textbook. Next, we create a part, to represent the surface geometry of the plate. The thickness is not available in the mesh, but rather it's used to define the ABD matrices in module property. The shell is defined as 3D, because it can deform in three dimensions, but it is a shell, meaning that the mesh has no thickness. We select type planar, to make it easier to generate the geometry. Next, we provide the properties of the 090 cross ply laminate as ABD matrices. In Abacus, these are entered directly as properties of the section, selecting category shell, type general shell stiffness. Only the upper triangle of the ABD matrix is necessary because the matrix is symmetric. On the top left corner, we provide the coefficients of the A matrix. The upper right is for the B matrix. Finally, the lower right is for the D matrix. Values of transverse shear must be provided. While Abacus calls them K values, in the literature, they are called H values. The correspondence between K and H values is given in the textbook. 
Calculation can be done with cadec onlinecom Next, assign the section to the part. Next, assemble the only part we have, into an assembly. As usual, we need a step. Next, in module load, we specify the boundary conditions, and the loads. We have two symmetric boundary conditions, on the initial step, so that we only model one quarter of the plate, 1000 by 1000 millimeters in size, yet the results are as accurate as if we had simulated the whole plate, 2000 by 2000 millimeters in size. Next, we have two simply supported edges, also on the initial step. Here, we need to constrain the transverse deflection on the edge of the plate. Next, the load goes on step 1. It is a shell edge load of magnitude 1 newton per millimeter. Now, we do the mesh.
Next, we need a job. And we call it 0, 90, 1 to remind us what type of laminate stacking sequence we are analyzing with this job. This time, we decide to run the data check, before submitting the job. The data check reviews the .inp file for errors. It seldom finds anything, because the .inp file is created by CAE, which seldom makes mistakes. Once data check is done without errors, we can submit the job. Actually, we should have avoided data check, since the first thing that submit does, is to run data check, before actually submitting the job for execution. OK, the job is now completed, so we can click results, which takes us to module visualization. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can find more details in the textbook, by following the link in the description. Thank you.